Namaskar. Hello and welcome my friends to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog where as the title suggests I comment with a straight bat. Now all eyes on the big elections of 2024. Kaun jitega Bharat? Who will win India? An electorate of a whopping 96 crore plus voters spread over 543 constituencies, over 10 lakh booths, 28 states, 10 union territories. But an election which guess what? in the world's largest democracy is being fought in the name of just one name, one man, Narendra Damodar Das Modi. The 2024 elections, my friends, is the ultimate presidential style battle being fought under the guise of a parliamentary democracy by the ruling BJP. Leave aside Kerala, a state that marches to its own beat, and Andhra Pradesh, which has an old-style contest between two regional satraps, in every other state, there is only one candidate who has made this election a referendum on his style of leadership. Even the BJP manifesto is almost entirely about deifying an individual above all else. Modi ki guarantee is the catch line that runs through every promise being made with pictures of the Prime Minister splashed across every page of this manifesto. It's almost as if the BJP as a party has been subsumed within the towering personality cult built around the concept of one nation, one election, one leader. It's like a drumbeat. Not since the high noon of the Congress in the mid-1970s when the then Congress President Devkant Barua had famously or infamously spoken of India as Indira and Indira as India, has a national election been so completely identified with just one person? The 2014 election, when Mr. Modi first became Prime Minister, was a vote for change, made with the assurance promise of a Din. 2019 was about leadership, but within the context of a broader nationalist appeal built around the Pulwama terror attack and then the Balakot response. This time, my friends, there isn't even a facade, a pretense of making this an issue-based election around jobs, inflation or income inequalities or of vigorously debating the hits and misses of the last 10 years of COVID, of demonetization, of Manipur or indeed the hits of infrastructure of this government. Even Hindutva doesn't really matter beyond the core BJP voters. The much-hyped Viksid Bharat narrative is built around the core belief now that only one leader can take India into the future. Even the promise of bringing the Olympic Games to India in 2036 is centered around creating an aura of near permanence around Prime Minister Modi's tenure. Therefore, from spinning a dream of a new India by 2022, all that's happened is the calendar has been shifted to 2047 and beyond, embodied now in the Prime Minister's vision of an Amrit Kal. Now, the concept of a Modi ki guarantee or a guarantee, a word coined interestingly first by the Ahmadmi Party in Delhi in 2020 to build their campaign around Arvind Kejriwal's leadership and later borrowed by the Congress to highlight its poll promises in Himachal and Karnataka, is now Prime Minister Modi's USP. It is based on the realization that voters are generally skeptical of their local leadership but are more inclined to trust a larger than life national leader like Modi even if the guarantee my friends is based more on hope some would say than actual delivery at times. Not surprisingly even Prime Minister Modi now rather grandiosely refers to this guarantee in third person. He too says Modi ki guarantee almost as if he too is subordinating himself to his own personality cult. Karnataka, which I've just come back from on my election travels, offers a good illustration of how this personality-driven, obsessive politics is working on the ground. Cash-rich netas, defectors and dinners, the new BJP in Karnataka reflects how a party with a difference is now simply a win-at-all-costs Modi-centric election machine. Half the sitting MPs of the BJP have been dropped in Karnataka, many of them senior and loyal karyakartas, while the party has stitched an alliance with HD Devagauda's JDS. Only a year ago, 
During the assembly elections, the BJP had fiercely campaigned against the same JDS, accusing the party of being a father-son private limited company that was steeped in corruption and dynasty. The anti-parivarvad, brashtachar hatao, slogans that you hear at the center now sound hollow in the lush green countryside of southern Karnataka when you see BJP and JDS leaders campaigning together. In South Bengaluru, the BJP's articulate young MP Tejasvi Surya had organized a Sunday morning run for Namo event. T-shirts and masks with the Prime Minister's face were being distributed to a charged up crowd. Amidst Jai Shri Ram and Bharat Mata Ki Jai slogans, the Modi Modi chant reached fever pitch. Now this is one of the BJP's safer seats in Karnataka. But as Tejasvi Surya himself acknowledged, this is an election in Karnataka and the country being fought in every constituency in the name of brand Modi. In a sense, the BJP's Modi fixation is understandable. When you have a trump card in the Prime Minister's undeniable popularity and mass connect, why will you not wear it as some kind of a badge of pride and honor? If the Congress in the Indira years could build its election strategy around the former Prime Minister's post-1971 Ma Durga imagery, why should the BJP hesitate to showcase its tallest and most trusted leader by some distance? But you know, my friends, what makes sense electorally might not always be healthy for a diverse multi-party democracy. In the most fundamental sense, a concerted attempt is being made to render all leaders and all other parties irrelevant to voter choices. And there's an irony here. The irony is simply this. That it is the Sangh Parivar which has often emphasized the importance of Sangathan or organization over Vyakti or individual. Recall how the RSS had frowned upon the BJP's 1999 and 2004 campaigns where there were these large cutouts of Atal Bihari Vajpayee as the leader India awaits. Now the same RSS has silently acquiesced to the Aigato Modi hi propaganda blitz. Secure in the knowledge that Modi 3.0 will faithfully implement the Saffron Brotherhood's core ideological agenda. A coalition era Prime Minister like Vajpayee Ji had to work within the constraints of a common minimum program. While a majority Modi government can push ahead with removing Article 370, building a Ram Temple and now promising a uniform civil code. RSS? Khush hua. You have a situation then, and listen to this carefully, where MP candidates across the country now of the BJP are reduced to faceless nobodies. Union ministers are serving as simply faithful implementers of executive firmans, with bureaucrats living up to their reputation as dutiful yes-men, with the opposition browbeaten and bruised, and the media as fawning cheerleaders. The stage is being set for an election where a resounding mandate is being sought in the name of Modi ji and Modi ji alone. In fact, the BJP has changed as many as 112 of its sitting MPs and counting. MPs are irrelevant. Only the leader matters. In the short term, you might argue this is a strategy that could pay rich dividends for the BJP in an election where on the other side, you have a divided and demoralized opposition. But in the wrong, long run, the inevitable question will have to be asked. After Modi who? And is the concept of a single nation, single election, single leader good for a democracy as diverse as ours or not? Or is it, as some argue, a pathway to eventual dictatorship? As a postscript, on a bus ride in rural Karnataka, I asked a group of women whether they had heard of Modi ki guarantee and the Congress promise of Nyai. Almost all of them identified with Modi ki guarantee and none of them could really fathom what this word Nyai was. Ironically, all these women 
are benefiting from a free bus journey, one of the five guarantees implemented by the Sidaramaya led Congress state government. As I said in this show, the Congress and the Ahmadmi party introduced the word guarantee into our political vocabulary. The BJP and Prime Minister Modi have run with it. That's the way Netagiri takes place. Think about it. That was the straight bat. Do of course uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.